Okay. So what do you, what what was the question here? Can you show us the actual cover? All right. I'll show you the cover, but we're going to get into this in, in a second. But this this is the record. It's Kirsten Edkins, Shapes and Sounds. It was okay. released by Coherent uh, Records, which is Kevin Gray's new label. This is his first like official number one release. Um, and it's essentially a quartet on most of the tracks, and there's a quintet. So this is what we're going to get into. That said, um, there's been you know a good amount of like hype around this record. Um, so I was really excited to get this in, and my expectations were extremely high. There were like people saying, "quote This is this is our generation's kind of blue." There were there were people saying, "quote This is going to win awards like Grammys and things like that." So my expectations were very high, and mm -hmm. maybe you know, and I'm not saying that that's not the case, but when I was listening to this, uh, the first side I got into, there are eight tracks on this. The first side is all quartets. It's three of her songs and one standard. The first song is Party Slug. She sounds a little bit like Ike Quebec in terms of like the breathiness, um, but it's much softer than that. There's no like gospel or like pain in it either. Um, there's no like smoky, rainy style that you feel like you're, you're listening to an Ike Quebec record. But anyway, so Party Slug, um, I wasn't really into it too much. The next one is Bird Shapes, Bird. I was thinking is a reference to Charlie Parker. This may not be the case, but that was my that was my understanding. It's a pretty decent bop tune, but it's overly chill. But it lacked all like the crystal clear definition and hard driving all over the sound Charlie Parker style, which was kind of like what I was hoping to hear from this. But again, my expectations may have been just uh, that that may have been a mistake. Dedicated to you is the only standard. I actually really like this one. I thought this one was pretty good. Um, I thought it was one of the best on, on the record. And then The Goose, this was the most interesting of her tracks on this side. Um, but again, I wasn't particularly that interested in this. So side one, I was a little, and I've listened to this twice, once with speakers and then once on headphones. And with the headphones, I, I made these notes. All right, the second side, it's very different. So the, the two first songs are Sweet Pickles and Woo Hoo. This is a quintet with her and Limor Guillory who is a trombonist. And these are very, both of these tracks are very different. So Sweet Pickles, um, it's upbeat. She finally sounds like she's starting to break through a little and you can like hear her tone kind of just be a little bit more forceful. Um, she takes her first solo and it's her best so far on the record. The trombone sounds excellent. It reminds me of Curtis Fuller on, on the trombones for a solo. And frankly, if this was the first song on the record, my expectations would have been completely different for the rest of the record. The next song, Woohoo, I liked even better. The trombone takes the first solo on this, and it's really nice. Um, then he hands it off to, to Kirsten, and it's, it's a really, you know, it's a decent handoff, and then she solos. And then later on in the song, they trade fours, which is pretty cool. So this song, you know, this song was okay, too. Both of these songs I, I liked. I didn't think I wasn't blown away by them, but I thought these were pretty good. Um, so then the next song, she goes back to her quartet like she was on the first side, and again, um, it, it, this song, it starts, it kind of reminds me of take five. I know she's playing tenor. First of all, it comes in with drums that just set this tone for like a take five. And maybe that's just my lay understanding of music. So I realize I'm not a musician. So, you know, my reaction is just as a fan. And then she comes in and I know Paul Desmond plays alto. So we're talking about different instruments, but her tone kind of sounds a little bit like Paul Desmond's. Um, but it sounds like smooth jazz or like dinner dinner style jazz. Um, there's an extended drum solo, but it's like he's playing in the pocket and then he's soloing in between the notes, but it's still pretty cool, so I like that. And then finally, the last song, it sounds like a 1960s Notre, uh, Nancy Sinatra pop song, which I think is pretty cool. Um, the trombone is back. This is the third quintet uh, piece of it. The track is okay. It's my least favorite of the three quintet tunes, but it's still pretty good. Um, and then I say Kirsten's solo is pretty nice on this one. So overall, musically, I was very underwhelmed, honestly, uh, given what I heard from all the reviews. Um, that's my take on that. So it is what it is. I can't recommend the record based on the music, but it might be your thing. So I don't want to dissuade anybody, but that I, I, I was a little, um, you know, that, that's basically my review. There's There's a few good tracks on it. It's pretty good, but... Nothing, nothing crazy. I don't think it's a must own. Wait, okay. Mike, you didn't do the presentation. So the jacket and the pressing. Oh, well, I'm getting to that. So okay. the next thing. Okay. 
So I wanted to compare this sonically. So now we're moving from the music to the recording quality. The recording quality sounds fantastic. I mean, I really enjoyed it. I actually, on the headphones, really, really liked it because she was playing into a microphone, but it was bleeding into other microphones in the other channel. And the sound stage is absolutely outstanding. I mean, I really have no problem with that. So I was thinking, well, let me compare it against another Kevin Gary record. And this is honestly a little unfair, but this record has tenor sax and it has trombone. It's also, I mean, one thing of note that Kevin Gray recorded this in what they're calling Hackensack West. I know that's like a tongue in cheek name for his studio, but essentially it's a small room. So this also was recorded in the Hackensack studio of Rudy Van Gelder. So I thought this would be a good comparison. And I think it really was. So I listened to uh, Blue Train, which obviously is a exceptional record. Um, and I do feel like when I played it, levels were like already matched. But when Train comes in on his first solo, it blows me away. Like, it's so much front and center. I mean, this obviously is a mono. So this is also a little bit unfair because we're talking about stereo mono. But again, like, the, the tonality of, of Train compared to uh, Kirsten's is very different. And they're very different styles, uh, you know. But, but it's just, I, I felt like listening to this really put things into perspective in terms of the recording quality and what you can get out of what, what kind of the uh, equipment was and how the room was set up and what they were going for. So I thought that Kevin Gray sounded, I would say this sounds better. It does. I think the drum sounded better, but Kevin Gray's sounds, you know, excellent. If this is a 10, Kevin Gray's is like a 9.7. Okay. Well, hey, I just want to call out, call attention to the fact that you're comparing her record to to like John Coltrane, like well, yeah. well, in in the reviews, in the in some of the reviews, they said that this is our generation's kind of blue. So that was just stupid. How about that? Yeah, well, I'm just saying the person that said that was very I respect very much. I respect. And I res I still respect that it's opinion. So yeah, I I realize that this is we're talking about like historic recordings, but people are putting this into context of a, a historic report. Okay, well, it's, it's basically kind of purple, sure. okay? Okay, fair it's enough. kind of purple. Now, and then did, one, it, did, one it sound, last... did it sound like an old recording? Finish. What? What? Did it sound like an old recording, like Rudy Van Gelder? Like, because it's all on tube, all tube system, right? Right. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't, that's not how I would describe it. I, I mean, I think it sounds, it sounds good. It sounds excellent. I mean, okay. I have no, I have honestly not a single criticism about the recording but i think it's fine and when i compare it to the blue train i mean we're pretty much up there it's you know we're splitting i mean the blue i would say blue train is better but we're saying i mean it sounds excellent kevin gray studio right. i think sounds out i mean outstanding yeah, yes yeah, I, I mean that, there's no question and then i just want to say i got this record recently i just showed this earlier but this is this is another tone poet but this is uh rudy van gelder's um uh, Englewood Cliff Studio. So this is after he left Hackensack into the bigger studio. This thing smokes both of these. I mean, yeah. this thing, it's so, like we're talking about record. technology, different room, but just so, you know, to compare it to the Kevin Gray thing, this thing is, I mean, this is, if if the, if if Train's a 10 and this is a 9.7, this is an 11. Yeah. I mean, this sounds so, like just incredible. I have the OG of this and the Tone Poet sounds better, way better. Mm. Okay, and then finally, I want to talk about presentation, the least important. Uh, so uh, I'll quickly show it, and this is a matter of preference, honestly, but we, we get this. It's glossy. It's a gatefold, right? You get the inner pictures. You get the back on it, too. Um, I generally preference, you know, like the Tone Poet on Pacific Jazz, the Katanga. It's a single. I would prefer – I don't need a, I don't need a, a gatefold. I think that's a little bit much. I get that that Blue Note wants to do it for their very nice re issues, and I think there's a special, you know, it's a special case. But I, I'm totally fine with a Stoughton jacket. You have the Prestige also that use the same Stoughton. I mean, single, real clean, stocky. It's it's thin. If you want to put session photos, you can insert it if you wanted to. This is Craft. They also use that Stoughton style. I very much prefer these jackets to the gatefolds just because of space and i just think there's better ways to do it i love the sam records presentation with the flip backs and the inserted uh um uh thing um uh session photos so anyway so that's my review so quickly to recap the music i was underwhelmed by i i'm not going to recommend it it's not terrible but it's a little uh 
um, boring to me. Um, and I realize that I'm not a musician and I would like to hear a musician's perspective. It's just, you know, from what I'm listening to and what I'm used to, I wasn't particularly blown away by it. The recording quality, I think, is top notch. I mean, I'm excited to hear more from what Kevin Gray does. And then the the jackets, I mean, they're essentially like tone poet jackets. So that is what it is. I would prefer a single one. So overall, I mean, I'm happy to have it. I think it's a cool, like, I like to support, I, I'm supporting Kevin. I think it's a great endeavor. I think it's it, like a cool piece to have. Um, but those are kind of my reviews. And so what do you, what do you guys uh, think about okay. that? Mazzy, you had a chance. Okay. To I got this two days ago. Uh, Harry and his friend came back. I hadn't listened to this yet at all. I only heard side one. First, they wanted to hear my puny speakers, quoting Mike uh, from the in-group, in my live room. We put on a Wil the new Wilco record, which sounds really good, acoustic stuff. We put that on. And it sounded really good here, considering, you know, with my setup. Then I, I remembered I had this, and and the, and Harry pre-ordered this. He hasn't got it yet, so we put on side one. Right when it started, it it blew us away on the sound, the sound. Okay, I was a I, I, unlike you, Mike. I was afraid listening to this because <laughs> everyone and their uncle told me get three blind mice, blow out, blow up, three blind mice, blow up because it's great sounding everything. And I got that album about two years ago, the three blind mice, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And to me, it sounded fucking amazing, but it reminded me of a hotel jazz lounge at the airport Hilton. I hated the music and I was afraid that this would be like that <laughs> kind of really good sounding loungy jazz. We put it up. We only played side one. I haven't heard side two yet. And we really liked it. I totally understand what you're saying. It's the first track. I, I love the opening. Um, it, I, I was actually very enthused because I expected to be really boring and it wasn't. And I know that's a fine line thing about recommend, or, you know, recommending a record or not. And I really liked side. We really, all of us really liked side one and were amazed how it sounded, how good it was. But I agree with you. It's not an adventurous album. It's an easy album. But it's not an easy, mellow, totally safe record. Um, I probably give it a little higher marks, but again, I haven't heard side two yet. But I think I think uh, side two is better. Can go, pardon me. So I think side two is, is better. I like side oh, well, two. That, then I'm looking forward to because side one, I we really enjoy. We played the whole side. We hadn't started drinking yet, so it wasn't any <laughs> uh, anything that enabled us to or that made us, you know. Oh God, this is fucking great! But it it the sound of this record blew me away. I mean, seriously, and and in this live, you know, room, it sounded great. I agree with you. It doesn't need to be gatefold. He's definitely emulating the uh, tone poet thing, and him and Joe Harley. Maybe Joe gave him some advice and stuff. It, it could have been a single thing. Um, I hope he uses more adventurous musicians. Definitely, um, I would if you. But it, but again, I like it better than that blow up album that everyone loves. That uh, Japanese, you know, uh, three blind mice thing. I think this is a better mm -hmm. record. Unfair mm -hmm. to compare. I didn't compare it with the Coltrane. I know that stuff. But um, yeah, yeah, it's A plus plus for sound. I would say maybe um, B minus for music. Um, C plus, but. It's an enjoyable record, but I didn't think of it really safe and totally loungy at all. I, I think I was worried that it was going to be that it was better for me than I expected because yeah. I had low expectations. Yeah. So is this the um, Kevin Gray all analog chain, analog mics, analog here, there? So on yeah, that two, level, it's probably worth two, getting two just as, stuff, yeah. uh, almost as an investment there, whether you like it or not, it's going to be a historically significant al album just because of the all analog chain. Oh, I don't hate it at all. I don't but hate there, it, Josh. If you yeah, watch, I, I enjoyed wanna, it, but yeah, I haven't heard I, the whole thing yet. I, I don't, it, 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 I'm not saying it's terrible. I don't think that's the case. I, I, I just think it's a little boring. I mean, maybe if you're, you know, getting into jazz and you want something easy or some background music, this would hit, you know, that would be fine with it. But I also, I also don't want to be like up here being condescending to it too. I, I'm, I'm excited to hear what other people think about it. I just, I went into it with the highest of expectations personally based on what I knew and then the initial reviews and it just, you know, so 
so I was just a little disappointed, I would, I would say. But again, I mean, I, I also don't want to be overly critical. I'm happy to have the record. Um, but yeah, I mean. Some tell, if you watch Steve Westman interview both of them live today, and he's supposed to be posting the video, there were some telling things in that interview. First of all, the, the, the initiation of the recording was as a test. And he started liking what he was hearing, and then from that process, decided to record a whole album. It's an excellent start. They didn't go I, into trying to record a full album. It just happened. So by that standard of things, it sort of falls in line between maybe the higher end praise and then your your assessment of it. Because there's no way you knew that, Mike, before... Steve Westman talked about it today. Or they talked. You know, about Mike it. just hates it because it's a white woman doing. I jazz. hate to hate it. You know, we I post. Um, we've been promoting that. I put on her Instagram, and she started commenting on people's comments. I really don't. I'm just. I, I have to be honest about like what I think about it, and I do feel like it's a big deal. Uh, you know, personally, I feel like I pre-ordered this before I heard any reviews because I was so interested in what Kevin Gray was doing. So I'm taking this very seriously. Low and, key. Uh, and anyway, so, you know, I, I, people should people should get it, listen to it and, you know, make your own decisions. You know, Loki. OK, if, if you're going to do a nine point five in numbers like that, if I had to give it a oh. number, I would probably give it a seven point a seven or seven point five. Well, I didn't get I said sonically. I, I was talking about the recording, mastering and pressing. Of yeah. It. Th thanks, Mike, for the review, because I, I haven't picked it up yet. And I was going to. So I don't. I, I kind of don't well, know I, if I, I am again, now. Again, I always think everyone should listen to themselves. Fuck us. If it's you, know. A, it, it, you know, it's an interesting yeah, yeah. concept. It's 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 not terrible. I mean, you it know. was better than any fucking Super Tramp record. That's for sure. Oh, well, you're dead. Now you guys are backtracking from your reviews. Well, I don't want to dis dissuade people. It's not like... You know, well, well, here's the deal. Mike, people trust your opinion. Stand firm on your opinion. I mean, don't I, worry about I, what people I, are going to come. Don't worry about yeah. tomorrow when a hate channel will be started about you, like me. Oh, man. Oh, man. So anyway, I'm, 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 I think it's really interesting because the all analog chain that interests me, and it's like the first one out. So it's well, kind tube, of a collector cut thing just on that level, right? Well, tube cut analog, too. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Thing. I know from start to finish, it's a complete triple A. So that interests me, right? You yeah. know, okay, put, I'll put it this way, uh, Mike. I would rather have this record than, and no offense to Chatty Cakes, but all these things he does, oh, the greatest male singers, the greatest female singers collection. <laughs> that stuff bugs the fucking hell, hell out of me. I'd been... rather listen to this because it's got one vibe to it, personally. But I will say one thing. She's quite attractive. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I, I just got her connection on Hinge. So we're gonna like meet up. <laughs> She's married, Mazzy. It was uh, that's the other breaking news from. Uh, oh, what's no? That's no. I'm sorry. What's the other app where you can meet married women? I forgot. No, you're thinking of. Uh, it's Facebook. The boy, yeah, the boy app. What is that called? <laughs> the boy app. <laughs> Spartacus. <laughs> yes, you want to go to Spartacus? No, my, I'm, my, I'm... my people. You did that was probably one of the better reviews I've ever seen you do. I would. Just be firm about it. People respect your opinion. Yeah. And generally, I feel like I, I, the stuff I don't like, I I don't collect. So I don't buy it. I don't talk about it. I'm not, I feel like I'm not a musician. I'm not an artist. I know this is really hard stuff to do. I, I don't like to be critical. I like to be supportive. So, but given just the, this is kind of an exceptional release for the year. Um, I just, you know, those are my thoughts on it. Well, and right now I, you, you can't stream it anywhere. So. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Right. like. Fremer didn't review it. You know, there weren't any reviews of this right. thing. And you couldn't hear it until you got it. He did say I mean, I, that he hopes to have high res uh, files of it that you could get. You know, here, here's the thing. When someone does an independent thing like this, no way it's it's going to get trash reviews. And I, I totally get that. It's like a mom and pop restaurant very rarely gets like you don't trash it. What you don't do, maybe you don't review it. But you don't trash, and it's not a, a, a album to trash at all. Yeah, it's a really good album. Now, if you're into jazz law, it's not an adventurous record, so this would be a good intro. If someone doesn't buy a lot of jazz and doesn't know a lot of jazz and wants something really good sounding, 
this would be a nice uh, start. Uh, this point. is for people who are hard of hearing. What are you talking about? <laughs> this, by wow. the way, this is this is the um, the album I was talking about, the Coherent Sound. Oh, uh, you know, you're so in, you're into this Jewish like jazz. Shit. Listen, Mazzy, you're I'm not a self-hating <laughs> Jew like you yeah. are. I'm not as I'm only twenty four percent Jewish. So. <laughs> yeah, but you're a hundred percent. Uh oh. Controversy. We used to call it the direct uh, master recording. Now, Rachel, are you truly? Uh, do you share lineage with Mazzy? Yes, I do. Now, does that mean you're like uh, you have Jewish like? Ashkenazi? No, I'm. He, I'm related to his cracker side, his proud cracker hair. Yeah. It turns out I, I was adopted. And I found out what four or five years ago now that my mother was from Wheeling, West Virginia. So I got cracker in me. Like I got coal mining blood in me, probably, probably, you know. I'm so so proud I, of that. I'm, like I could hang out with Elliot Cruz and yeah, we'd yeah. have a great. Hey, weekend. Elliot, I'm thinking of making a new version of My Fair Lady, where you're Henry Higgins <laughs> and Mazzy's Liza Duo. So Mazzy got his uh, Massey got his DNA done, so he actually matches my uh, oh. half sister. God and help my me. Biological birth mother. He, they they actually Ooh. come out of DNA. Bob, matches for Norman. Bob, did you get a copy of it? And will you review it? I'm curious. I would love to hear your opinion on this. It doesn't seem dangerous enough for Bob. You know, that. okay, let me say this, Mike. I t I totally agree with Michael, Michael's, Mike, whatever, Mike's uh, review. I have a slight different, and again, I haven't heard the whole thing yet. I don't discount anything Mike says. I kind of agree, but I'm I'm a little more sympathetic to the album. But I I was I expected really to be bored and i wasn't that was my thing yeah i had, i had very high expectations i was hyping it up with chris and and rob and everybody i was like i don't know why you guys don't have it pre-ordered so i mean i really i i i drank the kool-aid for sure for this so but, why, you know why, here's why the is thing like is that, is that, that uh, a bad nicole, thing? Was, nicole was saying it sold out so i mean you know, well, it's, it's, it's going know. to make us We only oh, pressed wow. the first half of them so far. So there's well, yeah, going to be another 50%. But 1,200 and a half hundred is a lot to sell it quick. It's FOMO, Rachel. So many people were yeah, hyping of course, it. Of course. Yeah. 12 and a 